So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick information if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Wonderful. Thank you so much for the confirmation, everyone. So my name is Neeraj Kheria, and without ado, let's get started. So here we have gathered for a discussion on AWS machine learning, where we are going to discuss on what exactly machines, what are different machine learning solutions offered by AWS. Because again, if you have gathered for AWS machine learning, then I believe that majority of you will already be, will have been already familiar with what exactly AWS environment is. So we are going to skip on that part. So here we are going to here we are going to focus mainly on the introduction to machine learning and how we can develop a chatbot by using Amazon Lex as a service here. So in terms of machine learning, now machine learning as we know is simply automating the entire process by making sure the system understands how exactly the environment has to be structured, and that is what we are going to start our discussion with. So AWS has been the global leader in the market since its inception back in 2006, and it has been. You, it has been defined as one of the leading markets, uh, followed by Microsoft Azure having a market share of around, what, around 21%, and having a, and then GCP having a market share of around 11%. And AWS right now has a market share of around 39%, and then all the other vendors they make up somewhere around 21% of market share. Now there are multiple advantages of now basically in terms of a first topic on machine learning, we are going to start with. Amazon Lex. Now Lex is like a chatbot service given to us by AWS. So using Lex, we can define the entire chatbot that can be easily integrated within any application. So we have a service by the name of Lex. So we are going to jump directly on how Lex is structured. So for that, we are logging to our we are going to log into our console. So AWS offers us a free tier access account that can be signed up for if we are using if we are signing up as a new user for the first time by using a new email id so here we can enter the email id as a root user we can verify that we are humans click on sign in so here we have lex Now, Lex is also a region-specific service offered by Azure, through which we can go ahead and create a completely conversational chatbot. So, using Lex, we can define the entire script. That means how the entire chatbot has to be defined, what all inputs have to be taken up, and then we are going to create the script, and then we are going to automate the process of response by using the inbuilt scripts available under Lex. And so to work on script about to work on the chatbot, first of all, we have to click on create bot. And here we can go ahead and click on create bot in this section. And under create bot, we can start by creating now. We can start with a simple example. Now we have three main examples available where we can pick from booking a trip or making appointment or ordering class. So here we can start by by going to the create application from scratch. And here we can define the bot name. Let's say we are going to create a bot for ordering flowers. So here we define the process order flowers. And here we can define the permission. Now, basically, we want to create a role. Now, role is required for every IAM service here, through which we can define the we can define the subsequent IAM permission. And then we can define if we are building this chatbot for any children-based website. Then we can then we have to agree to the children's side in case you want to design a chatbot for that use case. Then we can define the idle session timeout. You may have seen whenever we are going to trigger any chatbot. So for those who are new to chatbot system, let me just guide you on what exactly a chatbot is. So for example, if you have ever triggered the chatbot from Microsoft, for example, let's say if you go ahead and try to contact Microsoft. So again, Microsoft also has a really good chatbot system available here. We can click on get started. We can define the issue. For example, let's say I would like to cancel Xbox subscription, for example. So here, basically, we can simply go ahead and integrate a chat. So we can say a simple 
chat window altogether where we can simply trigger chatbot or we can make use of multiple FAQs. Now, FAQs are also used nowadays to make sure that the people they do get the entire help they need in terms of chatbot service, and then that can be simply triggered as a part of chatbot. We can simply define that. So basically, we can make use of any of these kind of chatbot systems. So there we can define the chat the session timeout, and then under advanced settings, we can define the tags, the tags test bot alias if we want to define. We can click on next. Here we can set an, uh, we can set the base language. We can define the voice interaction. The voice interaction is going to be based on what kind of chatbot we are going to create here. So for example, say here we want to make use of suppose a Joey. So here we want to simply make use of Joey chatbot. Okay, here this is going to load the entire language itself. So again, we can see a sample. Earlier it was available as a quick access platform. So let's do one thing. Let's return to our conventional platform because again, it is much easier to work with. Here we can go ahead and click on custom bot. We can define the bot name. Suppose here we are going to have a flower bot. And here we can define language. Language can be suppose our English for US. Our output for voice. Suppose here we want to use Sally. So here we can define whatever we want to here in a voice. And then we can define session timer. We won't, we don't want the chatbot to be active more than five minutes. We can define that. And then here we can define the sentiment answers as well in case we need it. Sentiment answers is when we want to include the machine learning experience with our chatbot here. And then we can define the required role. So and then if you want to uh, to comply to the generous rule that we can define that uh, to be yes and we can define it to be a no in terms of the advanced options and here we can go ahead and click on create so now a chatbot has been created now there can be multiple intent of the chatbot now people can come to microsoft with just one intention or they can be multiple intentions everyone if you're trying to support to microsoft website so they can be only a single intent of contacting them or they can be multiple intent so again, they are going to be multiple intent, right? So same way we can define different journeys for different intent as a part of the chatbot creation as well. We can define well now so if someone is going to visit the visit the website, they can start the chatbot conversation for ordering a, for ordering flowers. They can also start for changing the destination of flowers as well. They can also simply get in touch to cancel the order. So they can be multiple intent, and we can create multiple bots for different intent depending upon the requirement. For example, here we can start by defining an intent here. We can click on create intent. And here we can define we want to start by for with the intent of ordering. Suppose here we have order flowers. So this is our intent for which you want to define the chatbot. Now for order flowers, we can define the intent. And then we are going to define what exactly. Then we can define the entire script that we want to maintain for the current chatbot here. We can define the entire script that you want to maintain. And then we can keep on defining, first of all, the utterances. Utterance is like the username. For example, utterance is like the username or the entire user input with which the chatbot is going to be triggered. For example, if the user types in, okay, they would like to book a flower, they would like to order flowers. For example, the user may type in, I would like to order flowers. Order flowers. So again, this can be the main intent. Correct. This can be the main intent if we, that the user has. Now we can add multiple intent as in multiple different editions as well. For example, here we can also add suppose order flowers. Someone may type in order flowers, and someone may also type in suppose send flowers. Depending upon the user, correct. We can have different intent. So we can keep on adding multiple intents depending upon or suppose someone may flower uh, book flowers. Book flowers. For example, there can be multiple intents. We can include multiple intents as and required in case you don't want to use it. In case you want to add more, then we can simply define that as and required. So now we can do well, now here we can simply define the lambda initialization and validation. So basically, at the end, the entire processing has to be done by a server. So we can either use the EC2 instance or we can have the lambda function defined. So lambda is like a serverless computing platform. We are going to create multiple slots here depending upon the requirement. So basically here we can define slots as in 
the question is that we are going to take in from the users and then we are going to save it as a part of the response for example let's say here we are going to ask the user suppose if they type in okay i would like to order flowers so we can simply ask them okay show the type for example first of all we can define type and the slot type now we have multiple input slots depending upon the type of input we are going to take from the end users we have slots for colors for book series if we are going to ask them to okay about city then we have slots available for city as well for example here we have slots available for city as well we have if we are going to ask them suppose for address we have slot available for address if we are going to ask them suppose for the book type we have slots available for book as well depending upon the use case now if we are going to ask them for flowers right so now as you can see here there are no predefined slots available for flowers so we can go ahead and create one so under the slot types we have the option of plus we can go ahead and click on add and here we can, if you already have the slot list available we can import it or we can go ahead and click on create slot type so here we can define slot type name let's suppose here we have flower types we can add the option as suppose flower types we can add a description we can add a slot resolution we can add a value as well for example the first flower option is suppose we have lilies then we have to add suppose other options suppose as roses then we have suppose as orchids suppose we want to give the users these three options to choose from and here we have add slot and uh, if you want we can click on add slot intent here so here the question that they are going to get is which flowers you would like to order so here we can here so here we have given the of the users the of the question so as soon as they type in i would like to order flowers then they will be given the question as which flowers we would like to order and then they whatever entry they do whatever value they enter they that value is going to be saved as a response to the slot type as flower types all right then we can once they have given the responses so then we can add then we can ask them how many for example here we can simply save them in terms of number as a part of number so here we define as number itself and here we can define the number of flowers so here we can define this one as a number just a moment so here we can define prompt as suppose we can define sure how many flowers and then we can simply now if, if this is going to be required we can simply set this one as required or we can simply keep on adding more we can click on add more and then we can define okay sure now here we want to ask the users to enter the address so here we can now here we have a predefined slot type available for address as well so here we have postal address we can define what address you would like to have them delivered delivered to so here with the, when the user is simply when the user is simply enter this value for example we can create the flower types as lilies then we have roses then we have orchids because we didn't save it so again that is why it is lost okay flower types are already available here so which flowers you would like to order and then again we can add one more intent so this is going to be number and here we can define the slot type as number itself so here it is going to be number and then we can define show how many flowers again we can add a slot type for address we can define the slot type as address altogether and here we can define what address now what is the user they have entered these values now we, if you want we can keep them on mandatory as well if you require then we can define confirmation prompt so here we can ask the user a confirmation that means are you sure you would like to order now here we can define slots so here we have first of all the slot is suppose flower underscore type right flowers a flower type and then we can simply ask them we show 
you you view that you would that you auto suppose number or guess the number flower type to be delivered at the address the address slot that is going to be defined here so here we define the address slot and we want to make this one as mandatory as well address so this is going to simply capture whatever slot whatever values are going to be entered by the user and they are going to be displayed as a part of the confirmation prompt if the user simply says, says yes then this is going to be proceeded to the next step if they say no then okay your order would be cancelled and then we can define fulfillment as in at the end chatbot needs to process things and that's why we can define okay how exactly we need pro we need to process things here so we can define how we need to process as in we want if we have a flight booking system then we can simply use a flight booking system to process things here or we can simply use other parameters to define the entire process point i we can say way we want to take the input and how we simply want to display them the output or we want to have it processed by using any other we can say order management system that we may have the access to once we are done with this then we can simply go now currently we don't have the lambda function available as of now but again if you do have that we could simply add the lambda function by defining the lambda function that we may have defined in the current region right we can simply go ahead and do that so right now we are simply going to perform the fulfillment that means the responses are going to be returned back to aws and then we can go ahead and click on save intent so to, before we can test out this entire chatbot we have to save the entire intent and then before we can publish it we have to simply create a build out of it so you can click on build so in case there are any errors then that is going to be triggered in case there are no errors then again that is going to be displayed to us as a response as well so building the chatbot may take some time here so as you can see it is still in the process as we discussed building the chatbot may take up may take some time so once the entire build has been completed we would be able to navigate to the testing platform where we can simply test it out so all right so as you can see build has been successful so now we can in this left sidebar we can test out so to see if the chatbot is working fine as intended or not so for example here we can define chat with the bot suppose here we can type suppose i would like to order flowers so this is the and this is the utterance that we defined here. So now we have the first slot type where we have asked show which flowers you would, you would like to order. Suppose here we type it as suppose roses. So here this is the response that we are going to test it with. So as you can see, sure. Suppose here we want to order a bunch. So here we can define 12. Suppose here we can define the address suppose as ABC Street. So as you can see here, now we have got the same confirmation prompt. Are you sure you would like you would like to order 12 roses to be delivered at ABC Street? And again, if you simply go ahead and press no, then again order would be cancelled. If we press suppose as yes, then again it is going to be fulfilled. And again, they were if we had defined the entire we can say lambda function, then that would have been used for fulfillment as well as a part of the structure here. Thank you so much for joining everyone and have a great day, Hodan. And we have a great day ahead. Take care. Bye bye.